Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered today on the 16th of the eighth month, which happens to be the 29th of October, 2022, on the Gregorian calendar. And we are continuing with our reading of Bereshit, or Genesis, in chapter 3 and possibly chapter 4. So it says, and the Nahash, which is the serpent, right? And then the Nahash was more cunning or clever than all the living creatures of the field which Yahuwah Elohim had made. And he said to the woman, Is it true that Elohim has said, Do not eat of every tree of the garden? So right off the bat, you can see he was a liar and a murderer from the beginning, is what our Mashiach says. And he doesn't lie through outright deception to begin with, but he starts by questioning what Elohim said. And then immediately after, you're going to see that she actually adds to what was written or what was spoken. And we... And if you look in the Proverbs, it says, do not add to his words or take away from them. Do not add to his words, at least you be found a liar, right? So we can see the consequences of doing that right here. <clears throat> and the, sorry, and it says, and the woman, no, I had that right. Sorry about that. And the Nahash said to the woman, uh, I'm sorry, I skipped ahead. There we go. And the woman said to the Nahash, or serpent, We are to eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim has said, Do not eat of it, nor touch it, lest you die. And that command was never given, just not to eat, right? And the Nahash said to the woman, You shall certainly not die, for Elohim knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be like Elohim, knowing good and evil. And that's a common satanic theme of trying to be like Elohim that they still push today through what they call the New Age movement. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise or clever right I, I believe that word there is shakil we actually can look at that because that word is not wise it would be intelligent <clears throat> yeah right here laha shakil to make one wise, but literally Mishkel or Maskil is a, a title for a lot of the Psalms, or many, not all, a lot, but a, a, a lot of the Psalms. And then that word Maskil or Shekel is used throughout the Dead Sea Scrolls. They usually translate it as the instructor at the beginning or titles of things, but throughout the text, it's, it's intelligence. It's always the intelligent. So she says, and the woman saw, which is tere, that word right there, when the Babylonian mixture was being promulgated, they turned the gazer in Hebrew, or ra'a, into rea, the false mighty one of the Greeks. And if you're familiar with the Hebrew, the Hebrews mixing with the sons of Yahweh that formed the Greek language, you can see the connection of how that happened, but they just add an 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 a suffix to the end of words in Greek. So you have ra or re, which is to see, and then rea is the gazer, and the gazer is alluding to Hawa here, who saw the tree was good for food, and then it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one intelligent, and she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loin coverings for themselves. 
I don't know if it will show it right here, but that word for fig leaves, when you look at the, um, you dig into the word, it's also the word for excuses. Or it's, it's similar to the word for making excuses. It doesn't happen. Could you, if I could interrupt, could you go back and, and with her, could you please uh, look into that word? His, her husband with her. I like to know the proximities. Ah, ama, ima, right here. This is literally with, and then the hey is her. So you have Emmanuel, right? Is L with us, right? This is ima with her. So it it doesn't necessarily specify the uh, the actual how close they were they weren't standing side by side no indication of the immediate proximity one to the other uh, if you're in if you mean to say was he aware of what was going on that would be yes hua was deceived but man he did it knowingly because he was directly told not to do so and he did it anyways and then he made the excuse of well my wife gave it to me and i ate right but that's actually explained by um, Shaul Paul mentions that Hua or Hawa Eve, if you will, was the one that was deceived, not Adam. Adam intentionally yes. did the wrong. First Timothy. Yes. That's also talk, alluded or spoken of by Kepha, I believe, in the recognitions, but I don't remember exactly where. We have to look it up. Then we're led to believe, according to what you just said, that he watched, watched her as she was speaking with the serpent and uh, stood by and acquiesced and allowed her to fall. I can't speak of that beyond what was written. It, it says that he was with her, whether or not he was there the whole time or he saw everything that happened. I can't say. I, I really don't know that part. Uh, okay isn't direct thank you you're welcome now it might be in the homilies i have not read the entirety of the homilies which the the recognitions of clement there's actually two versions you have the recognitions and the homilies or the clementine homilies is what they call them <clears throat> and it is it's like kings and chronicles except you have a little bit of variance in them but it's two different renditions of the same events if you will uh, they don't exactly line up, and I haven't studied the one completely. There is one part in the recognitions that is a little off, and I've mentioned it when we read it before. And then there is a, one part that I've seen in the homilies that is pretty off. So I can't I can't say that they're all directly. It, it, I, one is not directly related to the other. There is one part of the homilies that I have read that goes into greater detail about the fall of the messengers and how they what they were doing and the things going on that is it's much better written than what you can see in the recognitions there's a lot more elucidation or light given in that area so there might be other areas of the homilies that also have that that i'm not familiar with but aside from that Irenaeus mentions in particular, the illusions with Adam and Hua, he goes into detail about it and how it, it plays out culminating in our Mashiach. So there might be something there as well, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. It's, it's simply that I've always found it hard to believe that somebody as, as uh, enlightened at the time, naive, yes, but enlightened into the plan of the creator, and knowing that that it is his responsibility for, to fill the earth would simply stand by and watch himself, female Isha, uh, destroy that that potential for the fulfillment of the of what he was told to do. Because if she follows him, he can't follow her. But anyway, that's that's been my conundrum. Right. Yeah. Well, that. You can also see that right here, she added to, and then she was deceived, and then either Adam watched it happen, and he was culpable for that, or 
he wasn't. But when she brought that fruit to him, he willingly took it. He willingly ate it. And he was not deceived in doing so. It was a willing sin. That one, that right, part is right. made. I understand that. Yeah. But I, I think that when in that part of Timothy, he, he talks about the first and second Adam, speaking of the Savior, that he was a good deal more enlightened about what was going on than would normally be uh, understood. In my mind, at least, he was uh, fully enlightened. He knew what he had to do. That's absolutely true. He was given uh, he was given of the Ruach. He was endowed with dominion and he, he was the responsible party for naming everything. As it was is what he named it. And it mentioned specifically that he was given the Ruach to do those things. He was a foreteller and he was aware. So you, and as the first, first oh, Adam, he would then as the first Adam knowing his wife has fallen but the the relationship cannot go any further unless either she can be redeemed which at that time it wasn't available or he must follow her and cover her so that they continue the plan of of the father to fill the earth so anyway uh, please go on I'm interrupting too much all right back up here and then it says, um, we already read that part. And then the man ate of it. Yeah, they made fig trees for themselves or fig leaves for themselves. So it says in the, <clears throat> right here, it says, and they heard the voice of Yahuwah, Elohim, walking about in the garden in the cool of the day. This would be our Mashiach, who is the voice of Yahuwah. He's the one that speaks for him especially when he appears in his person right and the best example of that is where our mishiach's talking to abraham there and he says i am el shaddai walk before me and be you perfect that was the father speaking through his son right you have that same thing it's easier to see in the book of yobelim so as you read through that you'll also see it where the father's speaking through that messenger to abraham or others and then he even talks to him to do different things outside of that. So there's interesting things like that. Another allusion to that or another like hand in the glove, hand in the glove kind of pattern is that in the Dead Sea Scrolls, it mentions that Moshe would even speak with the voice of Elohim to the people like Elohim is speaking through his mouth. And again, our Mashiach was the one that was going to come like unto Moshe to the people. The one drawn out of the waters, right? <clears throat> but he says, and they heard the voice of Yahuwah, Elohim, walking about in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahuwah, Elohim, among the trees of the garden. And Yahuwah Elohim called unto Adam and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. And again, Yahuwah knows all things. Our Mashiach knows the minds of all men, and there's nothing that he's not cognizant in that capacity. But you can go. This is what we were can talking about. Another, yeah. Could you, yeah, naked. You had your, could you uh, please parse that word, naked? Yes, brother, certainly. I'll, I'll look at that in just a moment. I just wanted to point out right okay. here. No, no problem. Our Mashiach is questioning him when he really doesn't have a need. But when you look at Yahu Kanan chapter 5, what we talked about before we came on, and then Yahu Kanan chapter 8, our Mashiach makes it clear that as he hears, he judges. And as he sees, he makes his judgment. And his judgment is true because he's not alone in it, but the Father is with him. And that's something you can see all the way back in the beginning when he says, let us do these things. Let us go down and see. Or as he's right here, talking to him to inquire. And then as he hears, then, then he makes his judgment. And we know that this is our Mashiach because he said that all judgment was given to him by the Father. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
But he says, oh, and again, we'll look at that word real quick. That word for naked right here. Irm. I don't want to pronounce that right. Irumim. Right? Irumim. The uh, Aram, if you remove that Yod and you get rid of one of these right here, Aram is the word for clever. Ir, Ayin Yod Resh, is the word for a city. Or like the watchers is Ayin Resh. Those who are in the city or working in the city, the watchmen of it, right? That's a related thing. But to be naked here is ayin, yod, resh, maim. That second maim at the end is a suffix meaning them or plural. So they were naked, the both of them, right? Iram or iram is nakedness. And this is very similar. You just remove that yod and that's the word for clever. They say that the word origin comes from ayin resh, or ayin wa resh, or, which is to be exposed or bare. Could, could, could I, the, the, what the word not uh, shame, uh, I was ashamed of myself. That, that seems, we know further on when uh, one of Noah's sons looked upon his father's nakedness, that was a shame. Uh, it's bad, quite bad. Uh, we don't, we're not quite as as uh, understood of that like like they were. But and we're, the first and thing they all, wanted to do was cover themselves. Go we're ahead. also told that only man is given the with the ability to cover their shame. Yes, the shame of only the man needs to. <laughs> <laughs> so when we get to Moshe on the top of the mount. We're going to go segue to Yo Belim and read that because that's when it ties in chronologically. But in the book of Yo Belim, during these events, you can see when that was instituted, like Sister Cindy just alluded to. When he gave them the garments to cover him, it mentions that, and it was given to man to cover the shame of his nakedness because of these things, right? And it was only given to him. The, uh, that's why you don't see normally, you don't see dogs wearing pants or shirts or anything. Men can put clothing on animals, but it is not in their nature to cover their own nakedness or the shame of their nakedness, right? Yeah, I think the, the, the what I'm alluding to is that shame is directly associated with being sinful or being out of the grace of, of our king. Uh, and uh, there's a lot more to that. When you see a person who is professing a faith and you look in their eyes and they're not, it's like they want to avert their eyes, they're ashamed. Uh, I've had that happen a lot. But, but anyway, I just wanted to find out just what that word came from. Thank you. You're welcome, brother. And the ion is the eye. It's what you perceive. The yod is the working hand. It's what you do. The race is the head. Right. So your nakedness and also, again, Rom is to be high and exalted like Rome or. Um, to exalt Yahuwah is to Rom him. Rama Yamhua is exalting Yahuwah in Hebrew. So to perceive your work is exalted or to to exalt or lift up. The work that you perceive instead of his will is also something that leads to nakedness. And that's exactly what they did. They perceived it. They saw that it was good. They took of themselves of their own volition in their own mind. And that was nakedness. So there is a lot more into these words when you look at it, how it's, you can break down individual things and all of it's true. All of it can be put right back in scripture and you can see that that is an actual thing. So not, I never want to discredit these things. And in, um, that's part of the insight that's given from the father to men, what our Mashiach alludes to with Kepha. He says, flesh and blood is not revealed this to you, but your father in the Shamayim. And I say that you are Kepha, and on this rock, the, the assembly of 
shall be built and the gates of hell will not overcome it right and that is the internal revelation from the father about these things that are true from his word but you always want to confirm it you can't you can't make stuff up or you you can't take something from your mind and just believe it without proving it in his word. So you can see here, for example, they perceived with their eye, they acted with their hand, and it was in their head to be contrary to him. And that caused nakedness. How wonderful his word is. I mean. He is the living word. The, the beloved of Elohim is the Hebrew language, as it says in the Syriac version of the recognitions of Clement. Sorry about that. <clears throat> All right, to continue here. He says, and he said to, and he said, meaning he was inquiring, who made you know that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? And the Adam, or the man, said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And Yahuwah Elohim said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. And Yahuwah Elohim said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all livestock and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you are to go and eat dust all the days of your life. And I put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall crush your head and you shall crush his heel. And this is the first foretelling of the advent of our Mashiach and what he would do. He would crush the head of the serpent, and the serpent would crush his heel. Which, if you go to any of his passion accounts, he was impaled on Golgotha, or the place of the skull, right? Now, we'll see it in Yobelim too, but the serpent... All animals could talk in the garden. They were able to communicate with man plainly, and it was taken away after the fall because of what happened. You can see it happen later on with the donkey speaking to Bilam, for example. But um, <clears throat> everyone gets according to what they did here. The woman was deceived and did, did openly did wrong, right? The man he openly rebelled right and then the woman instead of listening to her husband chose to do what was right in her own eyes and so he was given dominion over her to help her but that means that he's now responsible for her well-being where he might have not done that before now it's required of him but it says to the woman he said i greatly increase your sorrow and your conception Bring forth children in pain, and your desire is for your husband, and he does rule over you. And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, Do not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. He couldn't curse Adam because he already gave him a baraka. Be fruitful and multiply, subdue the earth and have dominion over it, right? You can't curse what has been Baruch. And that's a pattern you will also see continued. Noach didn't curse Ham. Couldn't. It went down. It says, in toil you are to eat. Or it says, cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you are to eat of it all the days of your life. And if he is not willing to work, neither shall he eat. That's enjoined in the renewed covenant. This is something that's never changed right? And the ground shall bring forth thorns and thistles for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you are to eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you return. 
the serpent's given to eat dust all the days of his life. And man in his dead state is dust. This is a, another illusion that he's a devouring lion, or he's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, right? <clears throat> For dust you are, and to dust you return. And the man called his wife's name Hawa, or Hawa. I used to say Hua, but that is the path act there. It's Hawa with a doubled wa there. I'm just not very familiar with pronouncing it correctly. But it's literally the word for chai or life with a wa or a man, something fixed there. And he named her Hawa because she was or because she became the mother of all living. And Yahuwah Elohim made coats of skin for the man and his wife and dressed them. And Yahuwah Elohim said, See, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now least he put out his hand and also, or and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So Yahuwah Elohim sent him out of the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. And he drove the man out, and he placed cherubim, or cherubim, messengers, at the east of the Garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the Tree of Life. Now right here, the Father was speaking. He says, see that man has become like one of us. A lot of people, or some people can mistake what that means. It was used at, by Simon the Magician in the Recognitions of Clement to promote polytheism. But in reality, this is explained by Kepha, by Irenaeus, and others that this is the father speaking to his son through whom he was pleased to have all things done. All right. And then we're on chapter four. <clears throat> that entire time, you don't see the Aleph Tau before any of their names, but in this one, you see it quite prevalently, okay? Including Eth Yahuwah. And anytime you see that, this is always our Mashiach. Every single time, without exception, he is the Aleph and the Tau. He mentions directly in Revelation, right? And then all these, every time you see Aleph Tau, it's always something that he created or has dominion or authority over, which is another thing to keep in mind. And Adam knew at Hawa, his wife, and she conceived and bore at Cain and said, I have gained a man. Uh, that doesn't read right. I'm sorry. Let's look right here. That would be the next chapter, huh? So it says, and she conceived and said, I have acquired a man from, they translate eth as from, but that's not that word, from Yahuwah. Okay. So it says, I have gained a man, eth Yahuwah. And again, she gave birth to eth, his brother, eth Hebel, or Havel, <clears throat> which his, word, his name Hevel, or Abel, if you will, also is the word for vanity. Vapor or breath, you see, Hevel. And this is the word all throughout Kohelet or Ecclesiastes, where he says, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Okay. He says, and she gave birth again to Eth, his brother, Eth, Hevel, or Hebel. And Hevel became a keeper of sheep, but Cain became a tiller of the ground. And it came to be in the course of time that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to Yahuwah. And Hevel, or Hebel, 
also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And Yahuwah looked to Havel and to his offering, but he did not look to Cain and his offering. And Cain was very wroth, and his face fell. It literally, his, his face, Nephal Pene, right? Like the Nephilim. And Yahuwah said to Cain, Why is he wroth towards you? And why is your face fallen? Is it not or is it not if you do good, you are to be accepted? And if you do not do good, towards the door is a sin. He is lying, and towards you is his desire, and you must rule over him. This is also uh, alluded to by Yaakov in his epistle. This is Elohim does not entice anyone. But men are enticed by their own desires and overcome when they when they conceive the sin in their heart and then accomplish it. His gifts were not accepted because he was not doing right in his heart. And he was trying to get him to repent. But that didn't continue here. And if you remember, this is the whole, the illusion of Gimel. As Adam... inconsiderately killed the firstborn of the almighty himself through his disregard for the truth so his son kills his brother in disregard to the truth it's the same thing he's reaping what he sows and it's also what you can see it, not only does he reap what he sows but every man gets according to what they deserve cain killed his brother and, and got the punishment accordingly it was his own actions that caused that, just as it was Adam's that caused his, but he's living out in his life the consequences of the, that behavior in the very same way that the anointed of Yahuwah, Aharon, or Aaron, after he repented and was made the high Kohen, when he had caused the two houses of Yisrael and Yahudah to go apostate with the golden calf, then later his two children brought in strange fire before Yahuwah and were consumed. So that's that same pattern. Uh, I'm willing, you can keep seeing that as we go along. But this kind of thing is what happens to every man in his house. You play out as you regard the truth. It's reflected in your life. Although it, it mentions that sovereigns and kings are, are judged and punished more severely, as well as those who do intentional malicious sin instead of of necessity or by compulsion or for whatever other reason there's mitigating circumstances but everybody gets according to their desire or their deserts as it is written so this is in cain spoke to eth abel his brother and it came to be when they were in the field that cain rose up against Havel and his brother and killed him and yahuwah said to cain where is Havel, your brother and he said i do not know am i my brother's keeper or guard and he said what have you done now he lied to him right but he he rebukes him directly and tells him the truth he says, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its eth mouth to receive your brother's eth blood from your hand. If you till eth the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. And Cain said to Yahuwah, My punishment is too great to bear, or literally my inequity, what he knowingly did that was wrong, is too great to bear. See, you have driven me from the face of the ground today, and I am hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and it shall be that anyone who finds me kills me. And at this time, the only other people that were alive were Adam, Chawa, and their daughter, which you'll see in the book of Yobelim. But this is what he was asking. And again, it says, ask and you will be given, seek and you will find. 
what uh, what you can see plainly talking spoken of, sorry, in the renewed covenant writings, you can go back to these and find that that's exactly how he behaved throughout. It just wasn't plainly said. And that's another allusion to it right there. And Yahuwah said to him, well, if anyone kills Cain, vengeance is taken on him sevenfold. And Yahuwah set up a sign. That word is Aleph Wa Tower Oath. It's where we get the word oath in English. But he set up a sign for Cain, least anyone finding eth him strikes. So Cain went out from the presence of Yahuwah and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew Eth his wife, which was his sister at the time. And a lot of people take exception to that. But we have to keep in mind that the Torah was not given until the time of Moshe. And when there is no Torah, there is no sin, as Shaul states very clearly. Even Abraham married his sister, and it was not impermissible to do that. It was actually what you were enjoined to do, and you can see that in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Noah took of his brother's daughters for all of his sons, because that was what you were to do, marry within the family. It says, and Cain knew Eth his wife, and she conceived and bore Eth Hanok, which means dedicated. Now, Cain no longer has the Aleph Tal before his name, but his wife does, and his son does, and his son, and his son, and his son, as you can see here, all the way down to Tubal Cain, because the child is not punished for the sins of the father. It mentions in we were just looking at that. Second Baruch chapter 54. It mentions that although Adam sinned and caused death to be in the world, each man has for themselves procured that torment to come or the rewards of righteousness based on what we choose to do. And the same is true for here. In the book of Gad the seer, I can't remember the chapter exactly, but when the shepherd from the Moabites is talking to Dawid and asking to be circumcised and to be a partaker of the covenant. Dawid lets him know that it's not possible for him to do that or for him to seek his good in any manner because he's a Moabite. But what could he do for you? And then the Moabite man reminded or reminded Dawid that Ruth was a Moabitess and she was his grandmother. So he being Pierce through with that, you know, seeming contradiction, he inquired of Yahuwah to see the wonders from his Torah to, to know the answer to that question. And Yahuwah revealed to him through the foreteller that the women are his. It was the men, the seed that was cut off, but the women belong to him and they are able to be partakers of the covenant. So again, you can go back to the beginning. You can see that is consistent even right here. His wife was still partaker until she, of her own volition, turned from him. Same thing with Hanok and Arad and Mechuyael and Methusael and Lemek. Although, and also his children. You have Yabal, Yubal, and Tubal Cain, which we're going to read about them in just a moment. The point is, it shows the truth of that. Each one of them are in covenant. They're all accepted until they turn apostate of their own volition. So to continue here, it says, and he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Hanok. And to Hanok was born Eth Arad, and Arad, which the oldest city in creation, the, the archaeological discovery was a city in Iraq or Babylon that was called Irad. That was probably the original city that was called Hanok that his son named after himself afterwards. Just like you see Asher had a name and, or Elam had one, but it was, it was subsumed later. Um, you had Asher and then children would come over and take names afterwards. There's different types where that happens. 
it's quite possible that 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 city the Hanok that was originally built was the city of Arad that archaeologists discovered in the Babylonian or Iraq area. This is Irad brought forth Eth Mehu Yael, and Mehu Yael brought forth Eth Methusael, and Methusael brought forth Eth Lemek. And Lemek took for himself two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the second was Zilla. And Ada bore Eth Ubal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents with livestock. And his brother's name was Ubal. He was the father of all those who play the lyre and flute. As for Zillah, she also bore Eth Tubal Cain, a smith of all kinds of tools in bronze and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Naamah. If you think about where they're living and when, the messengers would have been teaching men how to make weapons and brawn tools and things like that. And he was a smith. So they were contemporary with the time of the watchers. And remember, because Cain rose up and slew his brother without preserving his seed in the world, never gave him a chance to have uh, a fair shot or to, to forgive him or let it go, Cain likewise would have no seed that would continue all of them would be apostate of their own volition and he would in the similar manner not have that or any chance to redeem himself i can't remember i believe it might be in the yobelim but nama i believe was the wife of ham it says and lemek said to his wives ada and zilla hear my voice wives of lemek Listen to my words, for I have killed a man for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. For Cain is avenged sevenfold, and Lemek seventy-sevenfold. This is actually known as the first poetic verses in scripture because of the sing-song rhymy tone to it. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that, but I thought it was interesting. The... Um, the idea was that if Cain was going to be retaliated against for what he did, it's going to be even more so because Lemek had killed more, right? He killed two men, it says. Or no, no, I'm sorry. He, it says that he retaliated and killed a man for wounding him. So, but this was after the fact that Cain had done it to his brother and, and had been cursed. So now he went again and did it again. And that makes it even many fold if he's retaliated against, which is what's still enjoined for believers today. A righteous man in this world is not supposed to retaliate for the things that are done. Kepha makes it clear. He says, what, what do you gain if you endure beating while you sin? But if you suffer and if you bear up for, uh, un, for righteousness sake, this is favor with Elohim, right? So. From the beginning, you can see the things that are established, the ways of the righteous who don't retaliate, don't fight. I mean, you don't hear about Abel fighting his brother. He was just murdered by him. Okay. And then again, you'll see in Yobelim that our, our creator, if you wait for him, he's a righteous judge. He does not requit the wicked. And he actually had Cain killed by the same way that he killed his brother with a rock. His house fell on him. But it was after the death of his father. Because Adam had not done anything else to incur the punishment of the Almighty, he didn't die before another child did. Or he didn't have another child die before he did, rather. I'm sorry. This is an Adam knew Eth his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Eth Seth. For Elohim has appointed me another seed instead of Habel because Cain had killed him. And this right here is where we get the word in English for set or to place or appoint to put something, right? It originally meant appointed, like to set something, to appoint it. 
but and this is something that you'll see quite often words change meaning changes with words in time L living languages especially or only as you use it the context of a word will change and that's happened throughout history in particular with the hebrew but even in the english language today you can find many examples of that one example if you look in the 1828 webster's dictionary for the word oblivious it means to cause one to forget if you look at the word oblivious today it means to not be aware of what's going on around you so you've already forgotten it similar in meaning but not exact in the same way where this was appointed it is now to set something somewhere in the english language but it says and to seth to him also was born a son and he called eth his shem enosh then prof or this is then profane to call on the name of yahuwah now i put profane there or it should be then the profane began to call on the name of yahuwah in the common translation it says and then men began to praise or call on the name of yahuwah but when you look at what is actually written right there, it's an interesting word. And that's really what I was wanting to show you here. But it doesn't quite come out that way. If you look at what the word Enosh means, and in the book of Yobelim, chapter 2, after the creation account, it says that the 22 works, which line up with the Aleph Bet, and the 22 patriarchs are the from Adam to Yaakob, they go to together. They work in conjunction for set apartness and esteem. So you can take, and if anyone's familiar, you can take the first 10 names of the patriarchs until it foretells the future. You can do that all the way to Yaakov. But Adam is man, set, appointed. Enosh is mortal. And then Lemek is sorrow, right? But it's like man appointed mortal, mortal sorrow. But the Baruch Elohim. He, he will come down teaching or and his death will bring the despairing comfort and rest, which is Adam through Noah, right? Anyways, the point of that was that Enosh means to a man just like Adam or Ish, but it is a man that is mortal or <clears throat> infirm. And at this time, it says that the profane began to call on the name of Yahuwah. Right here, it says, it highlighted men, but they say began. This word is hu chal, hu chal, and it's really related to chalal, or chayil is a very similar word. But I want to look at that in detail, because we don't see correctly how that's supposed to be translated. But they say kalal, kalal, right, is the root or the original. And it means to bore or pierce, to perforate, all right? It's also used in my heart is pierced, right? And then when we get down here, you can see that he was pierced and wounded because of our transgressions all right it's also play the pipe because the the it is perforated a pipe is perforated flute has holes and it's a tube if you look at all the meaning of it that's how they get that word it also means to right here as a verb to pollute to defile and profane to literally untie or loosen, to become free, all right, free from obligation, all right, to profane or desecrate. When you add the noon in front of a word, it is like the action of doing it, all right. That's the nafal perfect form, and they have that translated as to pollute or defile oneself. It's literally to ritually be in contact with the dead. And again, that particular scripture was an added bond because of transgression. 
it was never originally where you could not touch a dead body without being defiled. You had the example of in the Yobelim and in the common scriptures where the patriarchs before the Torah was given would touch the dead and never had to clean themselves. It was never considered a wrong. After the golden calf incident, they added this because of transgression, and then they had to teach man righteousness. It was the trainer. When you commit sin or you associate with those who are in sin or, or spiritually dead, you become unclean. And it requires a washing and a renewing of the word to purify you when the sun is cut off, which is the light of the world. Those are all allusions of what our Mashiach had to do and die for the sake of us being coming back from spiritual death. And that's why those things were established. But this is part of those added bonds because of transgression that will not continue. So right here, to be sexually perverted or impure or profane, to be polluted and defiled, right? This is what that word means. Okay, so maybe you can get a little more sense of it right here. It says, as or then, at that time, who how the profane, right? To call in the Shem of Yahuwah. Whether, and this is again alluding to Enosh, who's the mortal man or the man who is one but of affliction and in a sense of weakness. I don't know if they, yeah, soft or delicate, they have it right here. I can't tell you exactly how this should have been translated because we don't have every nuance there. This word right here does not mean begin in any capacity, though. You can see at that time, profane unto calling on in the name of Yahuwah. And everyone was defiled, if you can see, we were all sinning, but they started, this says now they began to praise or to call on the name of Yahuwah. However, Adam did that from the beginning. You had the, the people, Noach, actually. Yeah, Noach called on Yahuwah too. The name they didn't have was Yahushua, and that was the one that was given. I mentioned that beforehand, but when our Mashiach died, he went and preached to those who were dead, it mentions by Kepha. And you find in the Shepherd of Hermas, in the Apostolic Constitutions, in the Psalms, where it says, and he took captivity captive and gave gifts to men, right? That captivity that he took captive was the prisoners in Sheol, the ones that had died before without his name. He took them and they resurrected with him. That's alluded to, or it's mentioned directly in Mat Matanyahu, that there were those that were resurrected that appeared in the city before he ascended. And it was a type and shadow of the things that were going to come later, if you recall. His first advent was a, a foreshadow of the things that would happen in his second advent as well. It's just, a, it's a mirror of it in some occasions. The times of the Maccabees leading up to Herod, leading up to the, the birth of our Mashiach, is just like what you can see coming through now on a larger scale, but it's a little twisted. So that's something we can get into more as we go. However, I think uh, right here is sufficient for tonight. We've got these two chapters or for this Shabbat. And then we'll cover any questions and uh, see you all next week. So Shabbat Tov and Shabbat Shalom. Thank you very much for your time.